and welcome to my channel. So today I have a special treat for you. Uh, in the spirit of everything is lit, I want to actually go over some uh, commonly used American English slang terms. This is brought to you by a BuzzFeed listicle. Uh, the link to that article is in the description below, so check that out if you want to follow along. But I figured it would actually be really helpful, really useful, and really fun to talk about some common American phrases that uh, people who are not American may find perplexing, to say the least. And boy howdy, does BuzzFeed have a lot of entries here. So I'm going to go through them one by one and uh, translate for my non-American English speaking people. So have fun. So here we go. The first one. Already. <laughs> what do Americans mean when a show is on at like effing 8 slash 7C? What is that? So basically, in the United States, uh, which is about 3,000 miles across, plus Hawaii and Alaska, um, we have, and Puerto Rico, we have a ton of time zones. So uh, when we have, when shows are coming on, they're coming on all at the same time, but not in the same time zone. So the eight slash seven or whatever number slash whatever other number is basically indicating the time zone. So here it'd be 8 p.m. Eastern time or 8 a.m. whatever Eastern time slash 7 p.m. Central time. So that is what that means. We're a big country. I know you smaller nations, you know, might not understand that, uh, but that's what that means. Number two, what do Americans mean when they say biscuits in gravy? All the pictures look like scones and lumpy jizz. So, okay, first of all, <laughs> what we're not gonna do is disrespect biscuits and gravy, not in gravy. Uh, no, but actually that lumpy jizz is actually a flour-based gravy. Uh, it's a delicacy specifically in the South, but I'm sure other places in the United States eat it too. Um, but yeah, it's a breakfast, maybe dinner? I don't know. Uh, snack treat meal uh, in which you have biscuits, which I guess are the equivalent of scones in the UK, except they're not sweet. Um, and you pour this flour-based gravy over it. Uh, and it actually tastes really good, so highly recommended. Next time you're near a Waffle House, check it out. Number three, what does it mean when Americans say they are a hockey mom? Their child plays hockey and they take them to practices? I mean, like essentially that is what it is. So if you've ever heard the term soccer mom before, uh, it's sort of the same thing. So it basically indicates a person, a parent who uh, is all about their child's sport. They take them to all the practices, buy all the gear, provide the snacks. Um, they're super into it, super pumped, cheering from the sidelines. The extreme version of this is uh, where you start getting to more Karen territory, where you have uh, parents who are yelling at the referees or you know making plays because they think that they're the coach or something. Um, but really, it just indicates someone who's very excited about their child's sport and their participation in it. Number four, what do Americans mean by two and a half baths? So once again, America is a very big country, uh, so we have a lot of space, um, if you don't live in a metropolitan area, that is. Uh, so our houses tend to have a lot of bathrooms, and uh, the half bath thing basically means uh, that it is an incomplete bathroom, that it has a sink and a toilet, and that's it, whereas the whole bathroom uh, has a sink, toilet, and shower, maybe even you know, a medicine cabinet, linen closet, something like that. Uh, so two and a half baths is pretty standard, like the, the aim I feel like in the American dream, you know, two-story house uh, where you have two bathrooms, usually a master bathroom that's en suite to the master bedroom, um, and a bathroom, a full bathroom that's like in the hallway for other people to use, and then like a half bath downstairs on the first floor uh, for guests so they can do their business and wash their hands. Wash your hands, everybody. Number five. What do Americans mean when they say to uh, transfer to a four-year school? I thought all universities were are, there are four years. So yes, this is where I get to use my master's in higher education to help you out. So this, uh, so you're right in that all universities are four years here, uh, but not everybody goes to a university. So there's, there's a difference between a college and a university. Uh, universities are typically four-year schools and they have multiple colleges in them. Colleges may be four years, but they also might be two years. So typically uh, people who go to a community school, community college, um, or, you know, for whatever reason, just uh, 
get their associate's degree first, which is the two-year degree, uh, sometimes will later then later on then transfer to a four-year school, four-year program. Uh, and so that's basically what that means. It means that they got their associate's degree or at least, you know, some certificate, something that marked their completion of two years of education and then moved on to a four-year school, which is the university you are thinking of. Number six, what do Americans mean when they say bite me? Are they vampires? Uh, so bite me is is, uh, is is a fun expression. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of like how to explain that to people because we just say it. So, <laughs> um, but it, means, it basically means like, leave me alone. Like, don't, don't bother me, eat me. If you've heard people say eat me before, F off, um, you know, something like that. It just basically means, you know, like, don't bother me, don't talk to me, get out of my face, like, what are you even saying? Um, are we vampires? I decline to comment. Number seven, what do Americans mean when they say downtown? I saw someone on YouTube comment, uh, in a YouTube comment, refer to the downtown area of York, and I have no idea what they are talking about. Uh, so, I mean, this is pretty obvious. Downtown literally means south. Uh, usually in New York City it means south so where the numbers are going down hence the down uh, in general the downtown area of a city or town or suburb or settlement I don't know uh, is basically where like the liveliness is happening so the more like community based area where people hang out uh, where there might be shops and restaurants and bars and stuff like that. So that's the downtown area. Number eight, what do Americans mean with grounded? So, um, I mean, you guys had to have seen American television at some point, right? Uh, when someone's grounded, that means they're on punishment. So usually this is like a typical like high school teen drama uh, occurrence. Someone breaks a rule, they stay out past curfew, or they try to skip school or something like that, and their parents ground them. It's a punishment. It means basically that you lose your privileges. You don't get to hang out with your friends. Uh, you have to come straight home after school. Um, you know, you don't get to stay up late talking on the phone. You get your phone taken away. You can't play your video games, whatever, for a specified amount of time as a punishment for whatever rule you broke. Number nine. What do Americans mean when they ask, where are you from? I am always confused. Like, where do I live or where I'm originally from? So... <laughs> This is, this is a pretty coded one. Let's unpack this one a little bit together. So where are you from? First of all, um, America is a very diverse place. We have a lot of different racial groups and ethnic, ethnic groups, uh, people from different nations coming from all over the world, especially in big cities like New York City. So a lot of times when people ask, where are you from? They mean, where are you originally from? Where were you born originally? Where, where, where you know, what, what country were your uh, most least ancestors from? Uh, usually it's meant as a way to like open up dialogue about where people are coming from, where they're, what accents they have, to satiate some curiosity, whatever. Sometimes, um, and, and sometimes it's perceived as, sometimes it's meant as, sometimes it's perceived as a microaggression um, because it assumes that uh, a person, just because of the way they look or the way they might sound, isn't necessarily American, uh, which then, you know, adds on the layers of trying to define and exclude what American is um, and exclude people from being American. So it's, it's pretty coded here. But usually when people are asking that, they mean where are you originally from, as in where you were born. Um, and the funny part is if you answer, I'm from America, a lot of times those same people will be like, no, but like, really, where are you from? And that's when we start getting into microaggression territory. So, um, yeah, answer that how you will. Number 10, current status. Googling what do Americans mean when they say, I do not disagree. So this is something that I actually would have thought that our British friends would understand more about uh, because it is kind of this um, uh, muted speech that Americans have uh, that I think is more common across the pond than it is here. We tend to be more effervescent and, and forceful, <laughs> apparently, with our speech. But this is one of those uh, instances where Americans are trying to uh, kind of be very muted. Like it's like a subtle way of saying, "Oh, I can see, I can see where you're coming from." So. If someone says, you know, makes, has an opinion, they say something, and I say, oh, I don't disagree. Um, it basically means that I never would have thought of that opinion myself, or I don't necessarily believe that, but I can see where you're coming from. I can see how and when that thing you just said has merit. Um, 
you know, I, I never thought about it like that before, but now that you've said it, I kind of can see where, you know, what that entails, whatever. It basically just means I can see where you're coming from. Number 11. What do Americans mean when they say dive bar? Is our equivalent just a pub? Uh, so the funny thing is, uh, the equivalent is not a pub because pub means a very specific thing uh, in the United States. I don't know what it means over there, honestly, but um, <laughs> it just means a very specific thing. Usually a bar, a small bar owned by an Irish person. That's usually what it means. I know, stereotypes. Um, but a dive bar is usually like, I don't want to insult anyone who may uh, frequent or own a dive bar, but basically it's a place where, you know, you can get cheap booze, have a good time. It's not like the fanciest place, um, but it, it'll get the job done. And it's usually a smaller place, lesser known, a hole in the wall, something like that. Number 12. What do Americans mean when they say running errands? This has always baffled me. It baffles me that someone asked this question. Um, because I thought that was obvious, but it apparently is not. So running errands is basically performing tasks. You're, you're doing your chores for the day. Um, specifically the chores that require you to go outside. So picking up the dry cleaning, doing your laundry, mowing your lawn, um, you know, just going grocery shopping. Those are running errands. Those are errands and you run them by going outside and doing them. Number 13. What do Americans mean by government mean? I thought your parents named y'all over there. Okay, yes, we don't necessarily have, the government doesn't name us, no, at least not in most states, but no, the government does not name you, usually. Um, <laughs> government name basically means like your full name and it's used in the context of someone calling out your business basically. So for example, if you go by a nickname or if you just go by your first name and in the context that you're talking to someone in, there's no reason for them to use your complete full name uh, and then they do so, it's like you're using my government name, like you're, you're calling me out, you're putting my whole business out there. Um, yeah, it's, it's a contextual thing. I didn't realize it was so cultural, but apparently it is. Number 14. What do Americans mean in TV or films when they sexually say, I'm just going to freshen up? Are they washing their nethers or what? I mean, yeah, I love how you asked the question and then answered it. Like, that's exactly what that means. You're going to go freshen up. Um, I, yeah, I think it means it, it was a way of just showing in, in TV and film um, that people were about to do the do. That's literally it. <laughs> I don't think that people, I mean, I do think that people legitimately do this, and so, but they, I don't think they necessarily say it like that in real life. Uh, I think people are like, yo, I'm just gonna go to the bathroom real quick. Um, just gonna go, you know, clean up a little bit, go get prepared, or I'm just gonna go grab the condoms. I don't know. I can see people being a lot more straightforward. Um, but yeah, it literally just means that they're, they're getting ready to engage in the activity they're about to partake in. <laughs> Number 15, what do Americans mean when they refer to mountain time? I want to live somewhere that's on mountain time. Um, so yeah, going back to the very first question, uh, yeah, we have different time zones and one of them is called mountain time. So uh, presumably because of all the mountains that are in the middle of the country. Uh, it's really beautiful out there. So if you want to live somewhere that's on mountain time, have at it. Yeah, Colorado, beautiful. And hot sleekle there? <laughs> 16. What do Americans mean when they say something is corny? So, corny, <laughs> it's weird. It goes back and forth between meaning like something that's utterly lame or something that's so lame it's actually funny. So, I mean, we go back and forth with this all the time. At the moment, corny means just lame. But yeah, it's usually a joke that's like a, too punny to be funny or too, just too lame or too obvious or just so like whatever. Um, but the funny part is that the cornier something is, the funnier it tends to be. So it comes full circle. Number 17, haven't done blank in a minute. What do Americans mean by this? So in a minute uh, just basically means in a long time, point blank period. That's another one that basically means end of sentence. <laughs> Number 18, what do Americans mean when they say someone is a tool? It seems like an insult, but tools are useful. Um, it's just a tool is a jerk, someone who, you know, may be presenting a false face if they, you know, act one way and then do other, you know, and then act another way in a different context or towards different people. Um, if they're tryhards, 
uh, if they smile to your face and talk behind your back. Like, someone's a tool if they're, if they're a jerk, if they, um, I don't know what the relationship between being a jerk and being used is, but that's what that implies. Number 19, what do Americans mean when they say tailgate? So tailgate means two things, and both of them are, they're very, very different, but they both relate to cars. Uh, so number one is, uh, so first of all, a tailgate is basically referring to the back of someone's car, right? Um, the, like the back bumper, the tail of the car. So tailgating can either refer to you, uh, you as a driver following too close behind another car, um, such that it's potentially dangerous and be very annoying to the driver in front of you. Um, but the more fun definition is uh, when it comes to partying. So in America, we love our sports, uh, particularly football, baseball, basketball, and particularly in football. Uh, a lot of times people will have tailgate parties where they literally are having parties out of the backs of their cars uh, and, you know, are drinking booze and, and eating food and stuff. Um, it's more fun than it sounds, especially when the you know, more people come together, the more people who do it, the better. But yeah, they're, they're literally just having parties um, in their uh, in the parking lot of the, of the stadium, pre-gaming and whatnot. Um, a lot of people bring pickup trucks so that they can let it let the, the back part of it down so that people can sit there and they can like have their cases of beer or whatever in there um, and it's a fun time. I've, I've seen seen my fair share of tailgating parties in college. Number 20, what do Americans mean when they say clutch? Clutch is, <laughs> clutch means handy. Clutch means that, you know, someone or something came to you in your time of need, right when you needed them. Um, even, sometimes even before you even realized that they needed you. So like if, you know, you were taking an exam in school, you were sitting for an exam and you realized that you didn't have a pencil with you to fill out your scantron for the exam and your friends like, oh, you need a pencil? Here you go. Uh, they came in clutch for you, basically. <laughs> I'm coming in clutch for all of you, explaining all of these Americanisms. Number 21, what do Americans mean when they say period after a sentence or something? Ah, I already did this. Uh, is it just like saying full stop? I'm confused. Uh, depending on the context, it could be like saying full stop. It basically is, uh, it's a way of emphasizing what was just said. So you, if you say, okay, you say your sentence and you're like period or like point blank period and that's on that or whatever, similar phrases. Um, it's basically to underscore the thing you just said, like, you know, uh, I'm trying to give an example. <laughs> so if I said saying period is different from saying full stop, period. Like it's a way of emphasizing or underscoring what I just said. It implies that there's nothing more to be said on the topic, full stop. Number 22, what do Americans mean when they say sidebar? So once again, this is something that I expected our British friends to understand a little bit more of because this, I feel like relates to like some Shakespearean type stuff. Um, but like a sidebar is like a real life aside. Uh, if you are familiar with plays, um, you know that asides are when characters in a play talk directly to the audience, unbeknownst to the other characters. So in my favorite play, Othello, uh, Iago does this a lot of times. He'll have an aside where other characters are present but he's talking directly to the audience and plotting and scheming how he's going to take down Othello. Uh, so this is similar to that in the sense that when Americans say sidebar, it basically means they're, they're breaking away from whatever narrative they were telling in order to uh, start explaining something else so that you can get additional context to the main story. So if I started talking about like, okay, Othello is this play and blah, 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 sidebar, you know, um, it was originally performed in the UK at this time, this date and whatever, and this was the, considered like a controversial play for whatever reason, I don't know. Um, and then return to the main the main story that I was telling. Number 23, what do Americans mean when they say finals? Ooh, more college questions, I love it. So, finals refers to the exams that uh, the college students take at the end of a semester or trimester or quarter, depending on what school, what type of school system you're on. Um, but it literally means the exams that you take at the final, uh, the final uh, weeks of your term. Uh, and they're just called finals for fun. So in America land, uh, we take exams. Uh, we have midterms, which happen in the, guess, you guessed it, middle of the term. Uh, and then we have finals that happen at the end. They are stressful and I don't miss them. Number 24, what do Americans mean when they call out shotguns? 
so this is gonna take me through some history. Uh, if I recall correctly, uh, what happened is back in the, the days of yore in American history, when uh, people rode in wagons and carriages and stuff, especially when people were going out west to start settling the land, um, you know, the frontier and the gold rush and all that fun stuff. Uh, people had to protect their caravans, they had to protect their cargo, or protect themselves uh, from bandits on, on the street, if, on, on the, the, the unpaved roads, I don't know. Uh, if you play Red Dead Redemption, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, the rumor <laughs> is that when people would ride, you know, they would, they would hire someone or appoint someone uh, to be uh, riding beside the driver in, uh, in the wagon or in the carriage carrying a shotgun or whatever weapon they have to fend off against intruders, robbers, bandits, and that sort of thing. Uh, and so the term, um, so, so that position of riding near, next to the driver, beside the driver on a long journey uh, became colloquially, colloquially known as riding shotgun. So today it just means the passenger seat. And it's the best position to be in if you're not driving a car, period. Number 25, what do Americans mean when they say someone's been drinking Kool-Aid? So this is another fun part of American history. Uh, I can't remember exactly the name of the cult, but there was a cult uh, in which the cult leader had his cult followers uh, drink Kool-Aid that was laced with, I want to say cyanide, but some kind of poison that uh, killed all of its members so that they can enter the afterlife that they were told was waiting for them in this cult. And so drinking the Kool-Aid basically means that someone is um, following along someone else's word or leadership or example without really thinking for themselves too much. Um, and you will probably hear this phrase a lot now that it is an election year. Number 26, what do Americans mean when they say, I'm just saying? I hear it on a lot on podcasts. This is another way that Americans underscore whatever it is they're trying to say. So it's uh, it's a way of us trying to like insinuate that, you know, we don't mean to like be insulting. We're not trying to be avant-garde or be risque with whatever we're saying. We're just throwing it out there. We're pointing out something that we think ought to be put pointed out because it seems obvious to us or because it's a really good critical point that people don't typically consider. Um, things like that. So if you're just like, hey, I'm just saying, you know, The Dark Knight Rises isn't that great of a movie. It's like you're saying something that you know can be, be potentially controversial, but you're saying it uh, in, the, in the context that you're like, okay, I feel like it has had to be said. I'm not trying to stir the pot, but I kind of am though. I'm just saying. Number 27, what does it mean when Americans go, it's two blocks away, what's a block? Um, I, I'm having a hard time believing this question is real, but a block is a square or rectangle in a city. Um, it is <laughs> formed by intersecting avenues and streets. Sometimes it's not exactly a square rectangle, sure, sue me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the, the chunk of land, I guess, uh, that's divided up by avenues and streets and whatever else um, to create, you know, different pathways. I don't know. How do you describe a block? But anyway, that's a block. Um, and, you know, two of them <laughs> is a unit of measurement for how far you're going for people who live in the area and know how long a single block is. Um, so yeah, so in Manhattan specifically, uh, blocks are pretty standard size because all the, the streets and avenues are about the same size and everything. Uh, and so when people say it's two blocks away, that means it's basically very close by. It's usually never exactly two blocks away, by the way, it's usually more. When people say, be warned, when people say it's just two blocks away, they don't mean it's two blocks away. <laughs> they mean that it's, it's a short distance from here. But a block is basically a unit of measurement. <laughs> it's a unit of land, basically. Number 28, what does it mean when Americans say, and that's the 411 on that? So another part of American history, this is back in the day. Uh, back in the day, Americans had what's called a landline telephone. Uh, and well, what people did sometimes on those landline telephones was dial the number 411 to get information about local things. So if you, you can call to get you know, announcements about whether schools were open during a snow day, um, to, you know, understand, to, get, I don't know, like literally any given announcement that was being made locally, uh, depended on the municipality. But 
411 basically because of that became synonymous with information so if someone back in the so back in the day in the 90s and 2000s on television shows sometimes people would be like hey what's the 411 i'm pretty sure it can possible said that i don't know just to date myself but anyway so they would say what's the 411 meaning what's the information what's the news what's going on what's happening and so it when someone replies and that's the 411 on that it basically means and here's the information you just asked for Number 29. Just realized I have no idea what Americans mean when they say pudding. <laughs> uh, pudding is a confection that is, uh, it's very, it's kind of like custard. It's kind of like custard. It's typically sweet, but not overpowering. Um, sometimes it's used as a filling and other things. Um, and it has a consistency like custard. That, that is the best I can explain pudding. <laughs> Uh, number 30. Why do Americans say crisscross applesauce? What the f f does that mean? Your guess is as good as mine, honestly. Crisscross applesauce. Like, I haven't heard that phrase in forever, and because of that, I forgot what it means. What I could imagine it means, because of the crisscross part, is that it means that you are making a promise, or you're reassuring someone that what you said you were gonna do, you're gonna do. So, yeah. But yeah, real, real life Americans don't say that, just so you know. Number 31, free does not mean free. Why do Americans say words that don't mean what they say? I mean, that's a really good point. Say what you mean and mean what you say, people. But uh, free does not mean free. Uh, two things come to mind. So number one, uh, the idea that just because something is quote unquote free, meaning you don't have to pay for it, doesn't mean that you don't pay for it in another way. That's kind of a general context of that. Um, but it also likes to go back to politics because why not? Um, it could also mean that uh, just because you have the freedom to do something doesn't mean that you are you can escape the consequences of doing that thing. Once again, a phrase you might hear in 2020, which is an election year. Number 32. I never actually knew why people say happy belated. LOL. Like, what, is it, what does that really mean and why do Americans say it? Honestly, I think this is more of a vocabulary issue than a cultural difference. Belated means something that happened after the thing. So when we say happy belated birthday, or etc., you're literally wishing someone a happy birthday after their birthday, period. <laughs> and finally, number 33. Why do Americans measure everything in football fields long? What does that mean to anyone else in the world? So a football field is 100 yards. <laughs> no, but a football field, uh, because football is such a popular sport in America, people generally do know how long a football field is, or at least can visualize it. So, and it's and it's a, so it's it becomes this kind of like the largest standard of measurement that Americans can easily conjure in their heads. And so, when people are exaggerating about something, this was several football fields long. Um, instantly, it conjures an image in our heads of being like, "Wow, that's freaking huge!" Um, just because we all. We all are born knowing the rules of gridiron football. All right, that was the BuzzFeed listicle, list article, yet another Americanism, maybe, uh, of common American sayings that absolutely make no sense uh, to non-American English speakers. So I hope that that was illuminating for you. That was fun for me to do. Um, hit me up with any other common American phrases that absolutely make no sense in the comments. I'd love to see um, what it what the cultural differences between English speakers and also stay tuned for the everything is lit episode that is upcoming I'm working on it now actually the reason I have my laptop open is because I'm writing the draft uh, the script for the next video so uh, look forward to that make sure to like and subscribe uh, like the video subscribe to the channel so that you can be alerted to whenever I post new videos and until next time I will see you next time